Okay, and another loud round of applause, a cheer for Dana Durnford, who is up there somewhere off British Columbia or on British Columbia, still looking into things as they continue to occur. We're moving into spring. Hopefully the weather's better up there for Dana. He's had a, a, an ex- I would have to call it an heroic and miraculous winter that he has survived some of the things he's been through. Uh, we are indebted to him beyond measure, and the information he has posted on his site uh, is unique in the world. We have really nowhere else to look except what we can put together here and a couple of other places as well. Uh, what's going on in Fukushima is not good. Uh, another, I can't prove it, but another example of what may be radiation-related massive die-off of sea life has occurred in the Newport Beach Balboa area of Southern California. They're calling these small crab-like creatures, and I honestly am not sure what they are. I'm looking at a picture of them now, and I I don't recognize them. They say they don't really uh, usually appear in that particular area of Southern California, but uh, it was big. Um, Let's see if I can find something. They caught one report said there were gazillions of them, mini crabs, which actually look like tiny lobsters or crawfish. Uh, they created a rim of red all along the shoreline, scattered on the sand along the uh, seaside community of Baboa Island in Newport Beach. Most washed up dead at high tide, but some were still alive and, and trying to swim near the, the shoreline. Now, no one's talking about this. How many different mass die-offs have we talked about on the program here? and posted stories about in the last couple of years. Dozens. And not one story that I can remember features any scientist or researcher talking openly about the potential of radioactivity in the mass die-off of whatever species we're talking about. And here we have another one. And it won't be the last. There will be many, many more. So let's go up north now and talk to Dana Durnford, the man who discovered that the orca were no longer singing at night, and they're no longer singing because they have no young. Not one orca baby has lived to the best of the ability of the scientists who study them past the age of a year since 311. Pretty sad. I'd stop singing, too, if I were in that group. Hello there, my friend. How are you? Thank you, Jeff. I'm, I am just got into port, and it's been a... Just a tough, tough day. Tough three days. Good days, but we got the data, so I finish up with the south end of the Queen Charlotte's Heidegoy Islands. That was 120 nautical miles and tough stuff today. If I didn't get out of there, I'd be stuck there for five or six or seven days. And so the whole dive fleet up here has moved up to where I'm to. Looks like everybody's going to be pinned down here for the, mm-hmm. at least that period, mm-hmm. maybe next weekend. Now, there was nothing down there. That is stunning. That is stunning news, absolutely confirmed now. And what, what did they say? Three days, how how was it described to you? There's like uh, there's nothing down there in in the context of what I was finding everywhere else. There's yeah. just two or three algae, and there was no mollusks. There was no snails. What is, so what are the divers saying about this? Well, the divers are are they're targeting a, a bigger up the food chain, the sea urchins and the gooey ducks. Uh, but they're seeing all kinds of other things. One of the divers was just telling me, as when I come into the wharf here, uh-huh. he's going to tell me more about it later, that he's seen an invasive algae out there along with the, the black coral. And it's, uh, it's like all the urchins and everything are running away from this stuff. They won't touch it. And he says it's the strangest thing he's ever seen. He was wondering if the species that eat them, that eat, some, eat that algae, got wiped out like sucker fish type. Huh. got wiped out for them to show up. Because he's been diving the coastline, I've known him a long time. He's been diving it for many years, a couple of decades. Yeah, and never, and it's just the strangest thing possible. Like I said, last time I was talking to you, the divers were were down uh, by Corona, down by Ramsey Island, by the hot springs here, and the sheriff's very popular area. And the ocean floor was covered in starfish legs, uh, leather stars was the most popular one they were seeing, but they didn't see the bodies. Um, I'm not seeing nothing on the coastline. I was right down into the wildest place you can imagine it was hellish for three days Jeff, where were you man, what was it where were you what were you doing da- down by cape st james trying to get the, the data on the shoreline down there on the coastline yeah 
And I did. I got on the beach just three three tides in a row. And like, that's what I'm saying. It's naked down there except for some algae. So that's really stunning to see it in, in the most, probably the wildest spot you can imagine in Canada. It uh-huh. is, in, by far. Right. It's naked down there. Shocking. And so this is going to, this is, I think, by the time we finish the Charlotte, this is going to change the game altogether. Very, very, uh, very sad news. Very devastating news. And just with the gallows left at the time. But this is devastating to have it absolutely confirmed. We were hoping for pockets of life. And uh, Yoshi was saying, you know, and he was right for the most part, but it was shocking that I didn't find it. There was, like I said, original couple of days that I first started up here, we did start to see no extra species, but we were seeing, you know, the same 100 species out of the 9,600 species, uh-huh. just less than 100 for the folks who don't understand. And they seemed like in that couple of spots, they, they were starting to look like, I don't know, you know, maybe there's a bit of life up here, but it turns out it's not. And that's devastating, big time devastating, because now it's confirmed. And so the Haida Gwaii's communities, the, the Queen Charlotte Island communities, these people are switched on environmentally. And they're switched on mm-hmm. to Fukushima, but they're being manipulated and lied to by a local Patsy. Um, he was the same guy, uh, John Disney, up in Massey. He's the same guy who who burnt up $2.5 million putting iron in the water off the Charlotte. I don't know if you remember that last year. And he was trying to create a um, phytoplankton bloom. Now, that's really interesting because the phytoplankton is the basis of the food chain. So why was somebody trying to exactly. get a phytoplankton yeah. bloom if it was yeah. healthy? If it was yeah. a normal ecological natural system because it's not. And so that was one of the kooky experiments scientists had played around with when they were panicking. And we, we, we weren't aware of what was going on. They got caught at it. And th- that uh, went away, of course. Now, he's, he's the go-to guy up in the Charlotte for the media. Now, I've done an interview with the local media here for an hour and a half. I gave them a presentation, an actual presentation. And then the same day, they published a, tori- a story of John Disney saying there was, uh, got the water samples, there was no radiation whatsoever, which is a patently absurd, uh, yeah, ultimately. Well, of this course. is part of that cover-up. Well, people course. are going to they're gonna believe those lies because it's convenient for them to. They just, they just do. You see the change in the divers? You know, the divers are half on the fence, half off the fence. Really? Okay, and well, those those that are yeah, off the fence... they're coming around. Yeah. They're coming around. They're coming uh, around and apologize mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. And, are they? You know, they had time, <laughs> yeah, they had time to think about it and talk about it among themselves and look uh-huh. it up themselves and come to the realization there was really truly something going on. In, in fact, what I was saying, right? Because... It's hard not to notice me with the big red dinky and, and another dinky on the roof hanging out with them all the time. So the sure. words have finally traveled throughout the fleet. And I know a lot of these people, so a lot of them will stand up for me and say, Hey, wait a second, Dana's not just anybody. Dana's one of the one of the team here, okay? you got to give right. him the benefit of a doubt before you can slander him. He's not doing it for something to do, you can be sure of it. And so I had that on my side, and that, that seems to be getting them all back on, on the table, back thinking on their feet. And so a lot of them are very concerned at this stage. A lot of them are really coming up and talking to me and telling me they are seeing, there's no doubt beyond any shadow of a doubt, there's huge changes going on underwater. Once again, you know, I'm looking at the tidal zones itself, so getting that data from them is a very helpful. That's that's a, a big plus, yeah. So they're seeing, is, yeah. they're seeing at what, 50 to 100 yeah. feet? That's yeah, about it. Yeah, they're seeing a huge change. Uh, in the ocean, and that the kelp is not there, and that the bull kelp, which is what the urchins, for instance, really love. Well, that's the forest and the ocean, it. basically, isn't right. it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it is. It's one of the, it's the biggest part of the eco- ecosystem out there, and it's very visible because you get it wrapped around your prop all the time, and you get bogged down. Mm-hmm. And so, because you can't escape it if you're on the coastline. It used to be. Well, it used to be you could... There was nowhere on the coastline you can go that was safe at low tide to go ashore. It was so dangerous because of so many algae. You can go to shore anywhere on this entire coastline. And a lot of the studies were done just pre-Fukushima. And so it was a very vibrant, healthy coastline right up to that point, And then everything disappeared. And what's unusual is the global warming scientists would be all over this if they could prove, you know, somewhere or another this was something to do with what they're talking about. Oh, they'd but love the fact it. that it's got sure. to do with radiation, they can't even... 
uh, mention it. They can't no. even go near. It. I no. mean, how can? Now, have you, you know, seen one story, Dana, yet where a scientist or a researcher has mentioned radiation as a possibility to answer some kind of a riddle or a strange, mysterious die-off? <laughs> Not one. <laughs> no. Have, hey, I got a good one for you. How come we only get Arnie Gunnarsson? <laughs> Is there another nuclear scientist on the planet who wouldn't mind having two minutes of fame out there, <laughs> I wonder? Why is it we all get fed this one single nuclear scientist and every other nuclear scientist is locked up in a basement somewhere? There I don't know be. what's going on. There's a special prison for them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there will be. I guess my way. They are, they are, they, they're in my gun sites, that's for sure. I don't mean that like physically, but... I mean, they're in the sites. they got to go. they got to get their pensions taken away from them. they got to get thrown away like garbage or used to, to go pick up the rods at Fukushima or something like that. I mean, you won't see Harvard at Fukushima. You're not going to see Yale at Fukushima. You're not going to see Stanford at Fukushima. You're not going to see MIT at Fukushima. But you'll see homeless coming and going. Nobody knows who they are. No one's keeping mm-hmm. records. And, mm-hmm. and they're using them up like, like it's the paper towels. And it's despicable that as a society we can sit there and allow this to happen. We should definitely send all the nuclear scientists down to Fukushima, Jeff, and give the homeless a break, you know? I agree. Uh, I'll, I I'll think help they, pay for their yeah. tickets. I got no, I'll raise money for every one of them that want to go down there. I got no p- <laughs> they, won't, they won't go near it. See, they, I think that most of them oh. know exactly what's going on. Certainly we they know do. that the government knows. They measure everything all the time. They know precisely how much radiation is in the water, is in the air, is in the rain, on the ground. They know, right? But they're not talking. I know. I, they're I laugh and, this all and, the time, and it throws people off. I'm sure they, they, got, they don't understand that I just went through eight hours of hell trying to get back into port, and that I'm still rattled from that one <laughs> for quite a, another couple of hours, probably till I wake up in the morning. It's been a it's been a a very hairy three days. Getting that's a very dangerous, very scary coastline. Just frightening. Well, the, you got your motors, both your motors working, I assume. Right, yeah. No, they're working fine. Uh, it's just, it's, uh, you know, that's intimidating. Great big ground swells. You're there by yourself in, that er- in those areas. You haven't got no time to make a mistake. It's a, And so the chance of somebody actually being able to go and get the data is next to nothing. It's such a difficult thing to do. And it's only the fact that I'm on the ocean for so long, that's all I know at this stage is go get that data so I can finally go home, right? <laughs> get all the exactly. data. Exactly, yeah. And then I can go home. And that's going to come in sooner than later because I can't last much longer <laughs> at this rate. I'm literally worn out. I've been out here for months. But I'm ecstatic that we got, unfortunately, the proof that there is major, major, inconceivable, are you gonna, unimaginable are you, damage. When are you going home? friend yeah probably going to be i'm going to shorten it up i would say another couple another weeks three four, another three or four weeks i'll be on my way home for sure all right let's say two weeks two weeks you go yeah, home two, well weeks. it'll take me two weeks to do the top end and then i all gotta right. get weather to get across and then i gotta work my way down the coastline which will only take a week or something now you like can that. go out this summer remember august yeah Take a look. Then. I don't know if I'll ever want to get on a boat again, Jeff. Well, <laughs> I, I honestly believe I don't ever want to see another boat ever for the rest of my life. Maybe you can just have and get a nice RV and and drive up with. Uh, right. I wouldn't this. mind uh, going doing an insect study on land. This That's on what I'm thinking. Shoreline, but, Take yeah, an RV yeah. up, look at uh, look onshore, and see what you see. Talk to locals about bird populations, right. insects, and so forth. See what you can it's see. A, I got an amazing amount of work left to do to upload all that data on the sure. site when I get back. That's going to take a month and a half, two months straight. Huge volumes of data and information to shift through and put it all together. So, you know, I'm... I'm and then, of course, you know, everything well, else... Well, if it, didn't, if it didn't, didn't pay so well, you probably wouldn't do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just a stupid amount of work coming up. But I can't wait to get at it. I really, truly can't. I want everybody to get their hands on it. Once you put that up there, friend, it's going to be irrefutable, undeniable, yes. end That's of story, urgency. period. That's the urgency. You've got to get it and get it up, and then we can have a debate. Until then, they can play the games, and they can play them well, too, and they're very talented. Well, they own the media. Uh, of course they can. I mean, I, I, I called out uh, Ian Gardard's, uh, Gardard's, G-A-D-D-A-R-D, journal, 
And this guy had put out a video, and he had said potassium-40, mm -hmm. and equated with man-made radiation, for 12 minutes straight. And so if anybody don't know any better than watching that, they're going to get brainwashed. I mean, it's just... Oh, that's it. You keep repeating the same lie. Yeah. Sure. Old, old trick. That's supposed to be a, a reputable journal that's uh, been quoted many times in the media. And here it is, just ball face, in your face, pure lies, just... Like you're living in the 1940s or something. Yeah. And I just don't know. I understand how somebody can do that. I don't know where their moral and ethical. Well, they, they, what we're really living in like is really the age of the end of morality and accountability. Yeah. We live Shocking. now in the age of lies, of duplicity, of deceit, of deception, and no one seems to care. We have no constraints, there are no parameters anymore. Uh, the little white lie has been replaced by the enormous, huge lie, and people don't have any worry about doing that. They just go go to it. Fukushima is going to spark them all up in a little tiny bit. I think all the people that have been living in these little tiny paradigms and fantasies are in for a really big surprise because the little comfort zone they built for themselves is not going to work much longer, and they're going to feel that on that terrifying rush of reality that we mm -hmm. have to do something. Mm -hmm. The pertinent reality is that we have to treat it like a meteorite coming at us, and people don't even understand that. But, I mean, they evacuated 7,500 communities in the Tetra River in the late 40s because of a hell of a lot less radiation than what's going on here. And a lot of people equate, uh, you know, Fukushima with uh, radiation bomb testing. Bomb testing, it was only about 5% of that product is fissionable, is atomized in the aerosol. The rest of it is, is sticking the stuff and falling uh -huh. down and landing on stuff. It doesn't actually atomize in the aerosol. Fukushima is cannibalized and rebar and steel and cement and rocks and everything else, and they are full of atoms, and they're being ionized and radiated, and all that water right. is spraying on and is ionized and radiating, turning into atoms. And that's the point is you put two million atoms on the head of a needle, but you can't see it. That's two million cancers if you were able to distribute an atom to each person. And it might take five years or six or seven years to show up. And so a lot of people, oh, I don't see people dying all over the place. It's common. Dr. Raymond Gilman, he killed beagle dogs and puppies for 35 years at Loveless Respiratory Research. And he showed definitively over 25 years, no matter how tiny that particle was, and he was doing americium-141, and plutonium 239 and no matter how tiny that particle was we killed 70 percent of the animals in, in about four years or five years that's definitive because these studies that was just one of the many 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 thousands of research institutions that are taking mammals and killing them but all the studies that they're using for models of radiation are based upon a single minute exposure and then this has been going on for about 50 years using that one model only, but yet they won't touch the models from the animals. They won't talk about that stuff. Uh -huh. they, all, all the data that they're arguing with people about is based upon a single one-minute exposure. That's shocking. That's the utter betrayal, an absolute betrayal of academics in every context of the word. And I think that'll be the ultimate crime is that we lost the fate now in the scientific and academic community forever. And yet that's what we're going to have to turn to and try to solve some of these problems. But how can we solve them? How can we have checks and balances that we can uh, feel any comfort in anymore? Because they have abrogated every single responsibility ever that, that was entrusted to them. We gave them the monetary. We gave them the authority. We gave them their pensions. We gave them everything they ever asked for to do a simple job and not do what they've done to us. And it's just that system. It comes down to this, is that corporations have human rights, and, and we got that through sledge of hand, through legislation, and that's legislation, that's an illegal amendment to a, to an amendment that can be taken away from. So human rights, in other words, the corporations, is the very foundation of taking back any kind of governance of ourselves and our futures, and, and we are the stewards of the planet, and this is our watch. And so the onus yeah. is truly on us to try to sort this out Mm -hmm. in in a in in a in a way that has to be a fair and equitable uniform. way. Yeah. 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 You know, where what are, what is our legacy is the most important thing that and I, and I know that's that's a Newfoundland accent pops out of me sometimes. But what is going to be our legacy is it going to be that we Our legacy is going to be death be and a legacy. dying planet 
a that's deadly not your legacy, though, right? yeah your legacy yeah. is trying to change that that's the point well, we you're are. trying to make you're just a single person and look what you've managed to accomplish in your lifetime you got a long way ahead of you many 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 good times ahead of you of, of changing the game that just one person was able to do I mean, that's a legacy to be proud of many, many times over. Well, Very few people can look at that and say that's their legacy. You know, I, I, I thank you for that, but I couldn't do it without the wonderful people listening uh, who care. And that's, that's, that's what it's all about. If there was no one listening, <laughs> I'm out in the forest yelling into the silence. No one's hearing. No sound, no Not ears, you. no nothing. So, yeah, well, we've friends, got, so we've so got people you know. out there who really care about you and what you've done, heroic things, you just unbelievable. I'm I got to tell you. I am I'm really thankful that you are still alive. I I worried about you a great deal and I think you're on on Thank the you. home stretch now and you'll be it's, okay. It's a rough one. Yeah. No, it's yeah. true. I hear you. Yeah. I um, I'm probably going to have to bug out I can barely keep my eyes open. Okay, no problem. You go ahead. Adrenaline adrenaline wearing off because I just raced eight hours up the coastline ahead of the weather. And it was a tough turn. Well, you're fighting it. You're fighting it all the way. Okay, well, you go go get some rest. Uh, No problem at all. Right this second. We'll talk to you next week. Talk to you next week. Thanks for everybody. And once again, thank you, my friend, for everything you're doing. Okay, good. Good night, everybody. Thanks. Good stuff. All right. Okay, Dana Durnford, and his website is, uh, click on his name, go right to it. It's nuclearproctologist.org. As odd of a name as that is, it is a treasury of truth. All right, we'll be right back. 